the only people that are successful in network marketing are uh, superstars that are outgoing and charismatic, uh, social. And that's totally not true. We thought that was true back in the 1960s, but in the 1960s, this is how they taught people to do network marketing. Now, for everyone here, if you didn't live in the 1960s, you're probably going to laugh till milk shoots out your nose. But this is what they taught brand new network marketers to do. And I just want you to think, how do people feel when we do this to them? So you'd sign up and they'd say, okay, uh, get a pen and paper. We're going to write down everybody you know. Everybody, every live human being, even if you don't know their name, write in the details. And then we're going to call, 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 and beg them for appointments. And if uh, nobody gives us an appointment, then we're going to use the three-foot rule. We're going to harass everybody within three feet of us. And finally, if somebody says, I'll talk to you, we say, shut up and sit down. Well, I talk at you for 45 minutes. I'm going to show you some slides, some flip charts, or videos tell you all about what I do and save your questions until the end, because I might cover it somewhere in my presentation. And then at the end, uh, if you have any objections, we're going to manipulate them against you and humiliate you and make you feel terrible. And then we're going to close, close, close as hard as we possibly can. And if you don't close and say, I want to think it over, we're going to harass you until we, well, until you buy or die. And that's how we started network marketing. That's what we told to do. Now, how many people here have noticed that people are still doing it that way today, you know, almost 50 years later? They say, oh man, we're, we're telling people all about our deal and <clears throat> all about our products and all about this stuff. And it's not how people like to buy. It's like they hate to be sold. Now, the question is, do people like it when we do this to them? And the answer, of course, is no, they don't like it. And do we like doing this to people? And the answer is no, we don't like doing this to people. So if nobody likes it, stop. Because this is not how the human mind works. If you have read that uh, report that we sent you, you see that the human mind does not use any information to make up their mind and to join our business. It goes through a series of steps. And I like to show you how you can use these steps to be like beyond awesome, to be in the top 99.9% .9 of all network marketers in, a, oh, in the next 20 minutes. How's that? Because most network marketers don't realize they're in the decision business. The company has a different business. Uh, the, uh, nobody here on this call are out there, you know, uh, making candles or uh, getting special herbs or, or fragrances underneath rocks in China at midnight with leprechauns. Uh, that's the company's business. The, the company is not us. <coughs> the company has lawyers, websites. They can even ship to people. They don't need us. The only thing the company needs us for is to get people to make a decision. So for all of us here on the call, we have chosen a career in the decision-making business. And once we get that, wow, everything changes. If we're in the decision-making business, the most important thing we want to know is how are the people we talk to going to make up their mind? Well, in the 1960s, we thought it was on information, so that's why we gave them tons of information. And of course, around 1997, 1998, brain science discovered, man, that is like bogus. So thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. So I'll show you some examples here and show you a little four-step formula. Now, if you have that report, you notice that the there's five little triggers for the human decision. And the first trigger, of course, is who are you? Unfortunately, we can't change that. Not within the first 10 seconds we're talking to somebody. In the first 10 seconds we're talking to somebody, our self-improvement's not gonna suddenly kick in at second number six or seven. So you don't really have to worry about who you are. You can't change it. If you happen to look like somebody's ex, well, chances are it's gonna end pretty poorly. Uh, is there a difference between me giving a presentation and Brad Pitt? Probably. So who you are makes a difference, but we can't control it. So we're going to set aside trigger number one. We have to know what's there. We have to accept it. But there's not much we can do about it. But the next four, oh, yeah, we can rock. Now, the easiest thing that we can do 
is do a presentation, which is, of course, trigger number five. So our presentation doesn't come at, until after the decision in step number four. So don't worry too much about the presentation. I am sure everyone here can do a great presentation, demonstrate the products, or if it was uh, uh, somebody signing up on your opportunity, you could show them a uh, press here and we'll watch the video, or here's some information for you. The only three that you and I really have to worry about are the most important ones, which is trigger point two, three, and four. So let's go do, through these very quick. <coughs> Trigger point number two is, do they trust us and believe us? Now, if nobody trusts us, they're not going to join. If nobody trusts us, they're not going to buy a product. It's over. So you could offer your products for one penny. Nobody would buy unless they trust us and believe us. And I'll do a quick demo. Uh, let's say that I have brand new Mercedes out in the parking lot. I'm offering to you to buy them for half price, but you got to give me cash. What are we thinking? Hmm. We're thinking, you're not from around here. I don't trust you. Uh, might be something wrong with these cars. But half price Mercedes-Benz is the deal of a century, but we are skeptical because there's no rapport, no trust and belief. So getting people to trust us and believe us is the very first step. We do this before we do anything else. Now, I did not know the step existed. I didn't even know what the word report meant. I never heard it in engineering school, and I grew up on a farm. The cows never brought it up. So, rapport, if you don't have it, why even bother with the presentation? It's never going to happen. So the first year and 10 months of my business, I did tons of awesome presentations. Nobody joined. Other people built rapport, and a lot of people joined. I didn't get it. So the first step is we're going to build a rapport. Step number two, then, when we talk to people is we've got to be interesting. And this is called an icebreaker. This is where we introduce our business into a social conversation. And we have to do this in a socially acceptable way. New distributors, do they have trained icebreakers or trained sequences of words and out? So they try to push a conversation into the, any situation and it's inappropriate. Let me do an example. <coughs> uh, one of your distributors is uh, attending a funeral and they say to the widow, uh, really sorry about your husband passing away, but you notice an order in here and we have, and you say, ah, this is really awful. Or, uh, somebody says, uh, my, my name is John and my son's name is Sam. And you say, oh, Sam, it starts with letter S. My company starts with letter S. Let me tell you about my company. They, they just try to force it in conversations. It's very ugly, very inappropriate. So we need an icebreaker to introduce our business into a social chit-chat conversation. Step number three is close because trigger number four is get people to say yes or no. So the final step is to get people to say, yes, I want to use your product, or yes, I want to join your business. That's it. So these three steps, rapport, getting somebody to agree with us or like us, number two, breaking the ice, you know, being interesting, and number three, closing, that's all we have to do in a conversation with a prospect. So let's learn how to do all of that and I don't know, how about less than 10 seconds? And while we're at it, let's make it 100% rejection free. Everybody okay with that? So let's get started. The brand new distributor comes to us and they say, I don't know anybody who's born of orphan parents raised by wolves and I, I, I just don't know who to talk to. And when I talk to a stranger, what am I going to say? And I found a party. Uh, how do I bring this up without looking like a sleazy salesman? <clears throat> I don't want any rejection. I say, stop. Grab a pen and paper. Write this down word for word. And here's what's lacking in our industry is word for word for each one of the 25 basic skills. So let's start with this. I tell the new distributor, all right, first thing I want you to do is write down the word high, H-I, period. Now, if you say the word hi, what do you think the other person's going to say? And they're going to say, well, 
based upon uh, the law of reaction, I suppose they're going to say hi back. Yeah, okay. Now, what you're going to do is hesitate at this moment, just a half a second. They will take over the conversation. Because finally, they've got a chance to talk to people. And they want to talk to you because nobody listens to them at work. Their kids don't listen to them. Uh, you are there, and you're going to listen to them. They are going to start, start talking to you 5,000 miles an hour and just dump on you everything that's happened to them, all their problems and stuff. And all you have to do is stand there, and you'll build rapport. Is it really? Yeah. Because who do people like, talkers or listeners? And for all the talkers here on the call, you go, oh, man. Yeah, but it's true. Shy people have a super advantage in network marketing because people love listeners. So you say hi. They say hi back. Hmm. They start talking to you. What are people programmed to talk about? Humans have a program that as soon as they talk to somebody new, they want to dump on them all the suffering they have, all the problems they have, how difficult life has been for them. And it's a program. We're programmed to do it so people love us more. Some people have a bigger program, some smaller program. But when people talk to us, you've seen another party, they just start dumping everything on you, all their problems. So before, we'd go, oh, ruin my day. Why do I deserve this? But now we're saying, wait a minute. What are people more interested in? Benefits or their problems? And the answer is people are 10 times more interested in their problems. So when they're giving us their problems, what they're giving us is what we're going to use for our icebreaker. Because their problems is what they're massively concerned about. So is there going on and on about their problems. We're naughty, naughty, naughty. We're going to listen for a problem that we can solve. <coughs> Maybe the problem could be about uh, their laundry stinks. <laughs> or maybe the problem could be their job doesn't pay enough. We're going to listen for the problem. And when they take a breath and a sip out of their soda, now that we have total rapport, we're going to repeat the problem back to them just to make sure they have it. So let's say their problem was, I never see my children because I got to put them in daycare when I go to work. So when they take a sip out of their soda or tea, we're going to say, hey, so kind of difficult uh, not seeing the kids because they're always in daycare and you're at work, right? And they're going to say, oh, man, you have superpowers. You're a mind reader. You listen to me. At a high level, you even repeat it back to me. You are the most awesome person ever in the universe. <laughs> total report. Just like that. They're saying, wow, Vulcan, mind meld, joined the hip, blood brother, blood sister. Uh, you see the world the same way I do. I can trust and believe anything you say. Mind is open. And once the mind is open, everything gets easy. Now, when we repeated the problem back to them, it created even stronger rapport, but it also introduced our business into our social conversation because they're going to be talking about their problem. So now they welcome it. You're talking about my problem? Oh, oh, oh. They're just like a puppy dog waiting for a treat. Because we should talk about them and their problems, not about us and what we have to offer. So in the first sentence or the first question, we have established rapport and an icebreaker. What's left? Closing. So our second sentence, we can devote entirely to closing. You need them to make a yes or no decision like your brother in the report. So let's see how soon it takes people to make up their mind. And I'll concentrate on opportunity here, but you can adapt this to your products. So. I'm talking to the lady, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, you don't get to see your children much because they're always in daycare and you're at work, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, would it be okay if you could work out of your home instead so you could see them more? <gasps> what decision does that person make? Instantly, yes, this is what I want. I'm done. It's over. Not just a matter of a couple details, which is going to be our presentation, step five in that report. But the decision was made before we showed our presentation, before we showed the solution. If their decision is yes, 
they are sitting on our side of the table when we show our business. They're looking for reasons why it will work instead of reasons why it won't work. Huge difference. No rejection, no objections. Just ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Almost impossible to mess up. So we can cover those three steps by reaffirming that they do have this problem and asking them, hmm, you wanna fix it. So let me give you a few more examples. Might say, uh, so you hate taking holidays at your sister-in-law's apartment with their 42 cats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would it be okay if you had an extra income so you could take the kids to Disney World instead? Or do you find that jobs interfere with the week? Ah, oh, yeah. Would it be okay if you had a lot more time by working out of your home? Oh, yeah. Do you hate commuting? Absolutely. Oh, would it be okay if you could work out of your home instead so you could save all that time? Oh, it would be great. Problem? Solution. So, uh, ever notice how the, when the laundry comes out, it doesn't smell the way you want? Would it be okay if it smelled awesome every time you take it out of the washing machine or dryer? And they go, yeah, 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 yeah. Problem, solution. Now, I'll give you a little ninja trick. If you were to write down these five words, they're called a magic sequence of words. There's hundreds of these. But they program the mind to do certain things. Now, before I tell you these five words, I want you to feel your mind. I'm going to tell you five words, and you tell me if you're going to give me a yes or no decision. So are you ready? All right. So I say to you, would you be interested in, and you're thinking, no. Sounds like a salesman approach. I might got to be careful. And in those five words, the decision was no. So if you use those words currently, stop. They don't work. They cause people to say no. So let me give you another five. Um, I just got involved with, and again, you say, oh, no, it sounds like my brother-in-law coming with another deal. So if you, we say these words with the best intention, but they literally drive people away. So skill number 11 is called the magic sequence words where we learn the words that make people come to us and words that kill us. So just stop using those two I've given you already and you'll see an instant difference in your business. Now, would it be okay if I gave you five words that worked? And would it be okay if these five words got our prospects to say yes immediately? And would it be okay if you just wrote down the five words I'm using? So would it be okay if I just type them into the chat here so you can see them? Would it be okay if? Now, these five words attack some programs in the human brain that causes people to say yes immediately. When you say, would it be okay if, they are programmed to say, yes, 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 high five, totally there, I have no idea what it's gonna be, but I wanna say yes, just don't make it impossible. So when you say, would it be okay if, people are programmed to say yes. So on question number four, or question on the fourth trigger, to get a decision, if you want somebody to make a yes decision, what five words would you choose to start that sentence with? And the answer, of course, is, would it be okay yet? So here's the ninja trick. On the second sentence we say to prospects, we're always gonna start it with, what five words? Would it be okay yet? And our chances of success go through the roof. So. I want you to listen to how this sounds and see how easy it is. So, uh, feel underpaid with your job? Yeah. Would it be okay if you can give yourself a raise anytime you wanted? Yeah. Christmas coming up? Yeah. Would it be okay if you could pay for Christmas with cash instead of credit cards? Yeah. Find things expensive nowadays? Yeah. Would it be okay if you could earn an extra $800 before Christmas? Yeah. Hate this job as much as I do? Yes, I do. 
would it be okay if uh, we had a cup of coffee with Terry and she can give us an escape plan? Oh, yeah, Terry's good at that. So how are we doing? Are we starting to get the idea that if we change the words, the results instantly change? So let me give you um, a little demonstration here. I'm going to pull out my phone, and I'm sure everybody has one of these. It's called a stopwatch on your phone where you can time things. And we're going to see how long it's going to take us to create rapport with somebody, to break the ice, which is an icebreaker, so we can get them interested, and to close them for a yes decision. So is everybody ready? Let's just see how long this is going to take. So I'm going to use the example of do you hate commuting? Uh, you know, would it be okay if you worked out of your home instead? Because that didn't take long. So let's just see how long that takes. So do you hate commuting? Would it be okay if you could work out of your home instead? So that says 4.70 seconds. So in 4.70 seconds, we can create rapport, break the ice, and close. 4.7 seconds. What does the average untrained distributor do in their first 4.7 seconds? So excuse me. Hi, how's the weather? Hey, I see you have a new dog. Oh, time is up. So in 4.7 seven zero seconds you and I can be awesome and it's rejection free because we're talking in the exact sequence the human mind pulls these triggers 4.70 seconds I know what you're thinking you're thinking wait a minute I could do that twice a day I could do that anywhere I could customize this to everybody I see so let's just try this so you go to a hotel meeting, and on the way out, you notice a security guard, and you say to the security guard, he's standing on your feet all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, would it be okay if you had your own part-time business so maybe you can cut back in your hours? Yeah. We go to the reception uh, up in front. We say to reception staff, um, hey, working evenings? Oh, yeah, we got to work weekends too, yeah. Oh, would it be okay if you could set your own hours so you could work when you wanted to? Oh, yeah, tell us about it. And then we see the maid. We say to the maid, uh, do you feel overpaid? No, oh, no. Would it be okay if you got paid what you're worth? Oh, that was awesome. And th then we see somebody at the bar and we say, do you like being social? Yeah. Would it be okay if you got paid to go to parties? Oh, unbelievable. We could empty the hotel staff and probably a lot of their guests seconds just like that. So having these two sentences, which cover these three parts of the brain, makes it easy for you and I to talk to people. And I know the question always comes up, well, what am I going to do for a presentation? Well, there's a one-minute presentation. Uh, there's the two-minute story. Uh, there's you know, longer presentations, demonstrations. But wait a minute. Let me give you five words for an almost instant presentation. Just something you can use in the meantime before you learn the rest of the skills. And I'll type these five words into the chat just to make sure you have them. And there you have them. These five words are powerful because you can also use them as a get out of jail card free, which means you can hear the worst miserable person in the world and just say, here's the short story, ignore all the stuff they say and get your point inside their mind. Because when you say, here's the short story, it's like putting a taser to somebody's neck for the next uh, 10 seconds. They have to just accept whatever we say. It's like their mind is frozen. So we can get our message in, they can't even block it. It's almost probably illegal. So let me show you how I'd use here as a short story. I call my cigar smoking, used cigar salesman uncle. 
I say, hello, uncle. And he goes, oh, it's you, pyramid boy. What kind of loser proposition do you have for me today? Plus, you ran over my cat yesterday, and you're an oxygen thief. You're using up valuable oxygen on this earth. You know, what do you want? Wasting humanity. So, would you consider that somewhat negative? And I'd say, Uncle, here's the short story. You're going to retire in six months. I start a business that could double your pension. Figure it out. The end. Time. And in just that moment, they got the bottom line. They say, well, maybe I do all these things. And then at the end, they say, well, I'm not really sure, you know, if I should join or not. Say, yeah, it is the short story. You can join tonight and start the countdown to firing your boss, or you can decide not to join tonight and continue working your job. It is so easy to get to the bottom line just like that. If you'll go, wow. Now, for the details, how different things work, how they smell, these are not decision points. These are just something that's really cool for people who've already decided, hey, I want to do the business. So on that report, if you haven't read it, go through and review again and see if we talk to people in this order, they like it. If we talk to them out of order, which is giving them a presentation before they made a decision, it stresses the mind. They're thinking, why is this important to me? There's so many things I got to do. Just get to the point. Do I even want to be interested in this or not? All this is going through their mind. They're not even hearing us. But we might as well follow these five decision points, and we can be awesome. So just give this a try. Uh, during the week, say hi to somebody. Watch what happens. And as we get better at this, we can say, wow, I can get to the point about my business and close. You say, but, 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 but what about, what about, uh, I want to get a whole bunch of parties booked. The human mind makes a decision the same way. So you're at a party, and at the party, there's some people there, you know, let's say we did a good time. So we said, everybody, um, uh, how many people here, you know, love the party? And I go, oh man, we love the party. So we got a report going here, right? And we say, well, would it be okay if you schedule a party for your friends so they can have the same experience? Chances are a lot of people are going to raise their hand and say, yeah, that would be great. I could you know, uh, get some people to come just like that. By using would it be okay if it's not offensive, people are programmed to say yes. So I see we have uh, nine minutes and six seconds remaining. If you have any questions, type them in down here. I'm happy to address them. But while uh, you're thinking of a question to type in, let me say this. If you could just put, would it be okay if inside one wrist, and here's a short story inside the other wrist, chances are you're going to have enough scripts just from those two that you'll be in the top 99.9% .9 of all people. Because most network marketers are doing business like it was the 1960s. They're trying to do this whole presentation before people are interested enough to make a decision. Do decisions first, then they're interested. Do information first, and you get people skeptical, folding their arms, come up with all kind of objections. That's not the way to do the business. We should be doing our business in well, let's double check here. That was 4.70 seconds. That's our business. Your company has a website. They have a legal team. They have customer service. They have shipping and receiving. Uh, they have videos that people look at and brochures. They have everything. They got their job done. All we have to do is our job, which is to get people to make a decision. So the partnership with our company is they do everything. All we have to do is get a decision, and we can do that quick without all the overhead of a company, without worrying about people's payrolls. This is the coolest business in the world once we realize that we are in the decision-making business. So from Clarum, uh, yes, it gives us a lot to think about and to work on, but I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say that your favorite TV show is coming to conclusion. It's the end of a long series, and it's dramatic. 
and that morning, your TV breaks. So you run down to Best Buy, or one down to Michaels, or one down to uh, JP Electronics, or wherever you buy TVs. You go down there, you walk inside, you want a TV because you don't want to miss your show. And you look at TV, see that one will work, that'll fit, yeah, that looks like inside my budget. Let me just check if I can take it home. So you walk over to the salesman, and the salesman says, shut up and sit down while I talk at you. Let me tell you about Mr. Sony. He was born at a log cabin, and he discovered transistors, and we got an award, and here's a video of our manufacturing plant. And we have testimonials, and our scientists can meet up your scientists. And this is incredible, and we're all natural, supernatural, uh, beyond natural. And 45 minutes later, we just want to poke that person in the eye. So why are you telling me all this? Because you want the decision first. So we would like to go in that store, walk over to the sales, and says, I saw this TV, kind of like, uh, a, is the price right, and is it possible to take home? And they say, yes. Then we might want to have a few details, but not before. So withhold all the details and blah, 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 because it's not going to make a difference on their decision. It's going to make them happy after their decision. So if there's no more questions, let me turn it back here to the host. So is our host still awake or have I put everybody to sleep? I am wide awake, Tom. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for joining us. You kind of really nailed it there for us. And um, I've been reading some of Big Al's books, Tom's books, and they are they will change your business. So if um, you want to invest in your business, I really recommend Tom Big Al's books. But um, thank you for joining us, Tom, in Thailand, and thank you for giving us your time. Okay, we'll do another call in the future, but meanwhile, let's practice this first 4.70 seconds of when we meet people. It's going to be pretty awesome. It is. Five seconds to grow, less than five seconds to grow your business. I can't think of a better tool than that. So thank you for sharing, Tom. And if we could chat about future call, that would be absolutely fantastic. We'll schedule it. Have a good uh, day, everyone, thank wherever you, you are. Thank you. All right. And thank you, guys. And I will see you on the Emerald Zoom on Monday, too. So thank you, everybody, for attending. I hope you got some value from Tom. He was awesome. Okay. so. I will try and get the recording up now. And if you want to tag in your team members, that is fantastic. So thank you very much for joining us on this Saturday evening, morning, afternoon, wherever it is in your world. Bye-bye.